Hey, welcome on to the Point Podcast, and man, I guess Tribe Time. Tribe Time video. I like it. I like it, man. We, uh, <laughs> Steve, a couple weeks ago, we knew we were having the uh, the combined service on Wednesday night. Steve had the awesome idea of how cool would it be if we were able to give y'all, um, I guess, devotional materials. A weird yeah, way to say, just it. kind of a follow up, kind of a carry on the study through the week. Just yeah, j- just something that you could have in your hands to think about on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then even Monday after Easter. And so, uh, so we're just going to get together and talk a little bit. And, and uh, we say this on the podcast a lot, but we're praying that this is not a substitute for what you're doing, but it's supplementing what you're already doing in God's yeah. Word. And, uh, and so today we're, we're trying to get in the mind of, I guess, the disciples, trying mm-hmm. to get in their shoes and kind of thinking through what these few days would have been like for them around the crucifixion and ultimately the resurrection of right. Jesus. Right. And uh, so today we're going to look at that Thursday. I like it. Yeah. Called Monday Thursday, okay. traditionally. For those of you who don't know what Monday means, tell them what, what, tell mean? what Monday means. Monday's not just a cool name for your dog. <laughs> it's, it is a. It means actually command. So it's a. Mm-hmm. It's and so I guess in light of when they titled it Monday Thursday, it's actually the time when Jesus said, "A new command I give to you," uh, and we can talk about that as well. And so that day was set aside as Monday Thursday, the Passover meal mm-hmm. celebrated together. Jesus washing the disciples' feet. So that day in the history of the church and in the history of our, those, there was a lot going on that day for the disciples when yeah. it came around to Christ. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff that was new for them. Yeah. You know, these Jewish guys and women who had celebrated the traditions and now mm-hmm. Jesus was doing some different stuff. Yeah. So it was kind of different for them. It was definitely kind of a weird day. It was a weird day. For sure, for sure. And so, so Steve mentioned a little bit, I guess that we can kind of kick off that day there with him washing his disciples' feet yep. in John 13. And cool. so um, if you had your Bibles and you wanted to pause this and go read it real quick, that's in John chapter 13 where Jesus washes his disciples' feet. And, and that in and of itself was a crazy moment. Yes. Right? I mean, you think about washing someone's feet is a pretty humiliating, mm-hmm. lowly thing. Yeah. And yet here's this guy that they've been following and this yeah. guy that they believe to be the son of God because right. Peter's already said that. Right. And yet the son of God is washing their feet. Yep. It's a pretty crazy Yeah, because as, as you know, the job of washing the, the feet of the people that came in the house was the lowliest servant's job. Mm-hmm. And so Jesus, by taking up a towel and a basin and getting on his knees and doing this, was, communica- was communicating something about himself yeah. to them. I think mm-hmm. it was really good. And teaching a lesson about how they were to be and how we are to be as well. Yeah, and I, you know, I think at the end of John 13 is when we see that new command that you're yeah, talking about, right. to love one another. Yeah. And what I think is so cool is, is Jesus is, is saying this is the new command, and then he's about to show them that love yeah. in the most incredible way that's they've ever right. seen just a few days later. That's exactly you know, really right. the next day, that's right? right. That's as, right. He's, as he's hanging on a cross. Yep. And, uh, that's right. and so that kind of kicks off this really weird day. And it just keeps getting weird. It keeps getting weird. <laughs> right. I don't I mean, know. Where do you want to go next on this weird? I day? mean, I guess we, we're, we're going to encourage you. We're going to encourage you in this to really read through Luke chapter twenty-two. Yes. Uh, really, the entire chapter of Luke twenty-two is, is just a depiction of kind of that Thursday. Yeah. And uh, I mean, immediately in Luke chapter twenty-two, you you see this guy who's been following Jesus, mm-hmm. Judas, a disciple. Yes. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at verse three right here. It says, "Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. And he went away and discussed with the chief priest and the temple police how he could hand him over to them. Yes. And so immediately, this is supposed to be the celebratory time. Yes. Right? And yet, Jesus, over, yeah. yeah, Jesus has got someone that's about to stab him in the back. Yes, that's right. That he that he knew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and then and I literally, Judas. What what was going on in Judas's mind? What was the reason for him doing this? Uh, I mean, people speculate forever what Judas was thinking, but yeah. the the fact that this was our basically something was happening inside the group to tear the group apart Mm -hmm. and to see their leader, their main teacher destroyed. Basically, I I can't imagine what that would have been like when Jesus said the last supper, the the Lord's supper. And he looks at Judas and says, whatever you're doing, go go ahead, do it. Like the the tension in the room. Like what (laughs) what has that been like? What were you thinking? Because, because in the other gospels, you find out that certain ones of the disciples actually knew it was Judas. Yeah. And then what was that like to know that in the room was Judas, the one Jesus just said, he's going to betray him. Yeah. He's going to betray me. Mm-hmm. Just can't imagine that. Yeah. So again, if we're in their shoes, they've just had Jesus, the son of God, wash their feet. Yes. That's crazy. They, and he washed Judas's feet. Oh, that's crazy too. Dude, he washed, he knew Judas was going to do what he's going to do, but yet he still knelt down and washed oh, Judas's nuts. feet. That kind, of, <laughs> that kind of makes us, that kind of makes us rethink the way we treat people. It's so like, like, like love right? your enemy. 
There you go. <laughs> so they've already, they've already seen that. Yes. They've already seen Judas leave, yes. and, and they know Judas is about to do what he's about to do. So, I mean, that's two things that's crazy. That's right. But then it, it gets even crazier, right, as, uh, as we get kind of to verse 14 in uh, Luke chapter 22. Yes. When Jesus kind of um, – <laughs> Jesus puts a twist on what they've been celebrating for like thousands of years. Right? I mean, here's the thing you have to realize. The, the Passover meal was, was a meal that was a celebration and a remembrance of, of their deliverance from Egypt. Mm-hmm. But it was regimented. Mm-hmm. In fact, many Jews, it was regimented so much that if you broke it, it was almost like sin. Yeah. And so they're getting ready for what they historically have celebrated with meticulous detail. Mm-hmm. And they have all that performed because it was prepared for them. Yeah. And Jesus breaks the tradition. Yeah. It's crazy. That's nuts. It's man. like you've ever been in a situation where you know someone's supposed to be doing something yeah. one way and they do yeah. it the other way. And, they and you're like, what are you doing? Switch. You're like, what are you doing? And not to mention, they follow him as the great teacher. Yeah. And wouldn't a great teacher kind of understand that you don't, you don't mess with the Passover you should. meal? And Jesus said, guess what? Yeah. <laughs> now, might have been honestly, I mean, I'm and trying to put ourselves in their shoes. This might be the weirdest part of the day yet. Really? I mean, yeah. I mean, Judas would have been crazy. That's intense. Nuts, yeah. Jesus washing the feet obviously is intense. But you're right with with Jesus knowing the Old Testament so incredibly well. Yeah. He shouldn't mess this up. No, he shouldn't mess this up. And now we know he's not messing and it up. Exactly. But, to them, but to them, <laughs> to them, it's blowing it up. Yeah. yeah. And so I guess we can talk about later. Like why? It's kind of like somebody goes, uh, "Can he do that?" <laughs> and I mean, now now we would go. He's the Son of God. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but they were like, "Can you do that?" It's a crazy time. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so you have the defeat. De- de- uh, Judas leaving. Yep. You have him messing up the Lord's Supper, which we know he's not messing up, <laughs> but that's what it seems like in the Jesus, moment. Jesus, you messed it <laughs> what up. What it seems like. And then, this might, it gets even crazy, right? Because when you get to verse 31 through 34 of this uh, passage in Luke 22, yes. you have Peter, who's like the man he's disciple. He's the MVP disciple. Yeah, and, and Jesus basically tells him, hey, Peter. He's you're the most to... valuable punk. <laughs> 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 he's like, you're, you're going to mess up, man. You're going to mess up. Before the rooster crows, <laughs> you're going to not deny me once. You're going to do it three times. Yeah. And so I, mean, I can't imagine being like, you know, one of the, the yeah. disciples. We can't remember their names. And he yes. said, oh, my gosh, if that's Peter, yeah. what am I about to do? Well, well think about like, this. Because look at what Simon, he said, Simon, <laughs> because Simon Peter basically told him, dude, you're not going to die. I'm with you, but yeah. I'm the greatest. And Simon's probably thinking, I just basically stood up for Jesus, and I'm about to get an attaboy, a pat yeah. on my back. And Jesus goes, dude, you're going to turn your back on me. <laughs> like what? It's crazy, 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 crazy. Yeah. And so I mean, this this night is even getting more trouble. And then and then it goes even crazier. <coughs> what does say in verse thirty five? He he starts beginning talking to them about man, there's going to be trouble that's coming your way, yes. right? That yes. it's not. And and I think we have to keep this in mind with what's just happened this week is Jesus comes in and people are rejoicing. He's coming in. Yes. It's Passover. This is yes. awesome. Yes. And, and this, the disciples are thinking this is a good day because we're we're set it up. Yeah. We're set up. We're we're ready to take power. We're ready to take control. Or whatever. Yeah. And Jesus is recognized as the man, and they're like, "This is a good day." Yeah. And then Jesus. It's 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 like, how do I say this? This this night is just not going the way they expected no, it to go. Exactly, because they yeah. had. Oh man, have you ever had those nights? Oh yeah. Like, this is just not working. Come yeah. on, that's this night. Isn't it? Isn't it really cool though that like Jesus is able to work through all that? And all it's like they had. It's like they have no idea what's going on. Yes. And I have to wonder, like. Maybe there was like a hidden just joy in Jesus' heart. Like, <laughs> He's like, I yes, know what's going on. I got this. And you know yeah. what? That's kind of true for us. Though. Yeah. It's kind of true for us. Many times we think we have an agenda for Jesus, but as we see time and time and again in the life of Christ and his teaching, mm-hmm. he always has, he has it together. Yeah. You know, and even when we feel like things just aren't quite matching up, his purpose and his plan is always being yeah. accomplished. Yeah. You know? And so I think this is one of those, we get to see it. If we were sitting in that room, we wouldn't see it the same mm-hmm. way. But, uh, I mean, we get to go and say, Jesus has really got it all together when his disciples have their own ulterior motives yeah. and misconceptions, mm-hmm. you know. And so. Yeah. And so, I mean, we've, we've already seen how this night's crazy. And then, obviously, the final crazy part is Jesus gets handed over. That's right. Right? I mean, it's this is like... It's like, okay, all this stuff is wild, but then when they actually see the guy they've been following yeah. be taken away. Exactly. I, I just, I sit there and I, this, and again, thinking from what this day and this week means to them. It's yes. so happy. It's such a celebratory time, yes. remembering what God is doing. Yes. And then it's, it, it, this kind of starts getting in their head like, yes. man, this is about to go really, really bad. Yeah. Which is a really cool part of the story because yeah. every good story has a, has a part where you know everything's going good, mm-hmm. but because you know the story so much now, mm-hmm. you think, this is going so good, it's about to turn. Yeah. 
it literally is the turning point in the story yeah. where everything's great. The disciples are a little weird. This is what Jesus is doing, but it's a great day. We're celebrating the Passover, and then all of a sudden, yeah. he gets he gets taken. Mm-hmm. The, the story changes drastically. Yeah. So what do you think if you're if you're a disciple? They probably didn't sleep much on Thursday night. No. I wouldn't think. No. But as you're sitting there laying there, what do you think's going through your head? If you could, if we could put ourselves in their shoes, I, I, we didn't even write this question. No, down, it's but good. I just think I, that what would be going cool. through my head? What just happened? Yeah. Uh, did we get it all wrong? Yeah. Did I just waste three years of my life? Mm-hmm. Am, am I going to be taken next? Yeah. Is Jesus going to give up all of us yeah. when he's interrogated? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. What I kind of wonder, too. I, I don't know if there's, if there's maybe, I don't, I don't know. I'm not trying to, like, read too much into it, but maybe there's something I'm thinking about, like, and we've seen Jesus do all this awesome stuff. Oh, good point. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like we've yeah. seen him because they've seen him slip through people's grasp before. Absolutely. You know, it's like, it's like and maybe maybe there's something something happening here. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's gonna pull a Houdini because <laughs> they didn't will. know Houdini. Then, but, <laughs> but is he is he gonna do it again? Is he gonna yeah. come back through the door when we're you know slip back in? Yeah. Uh, but I think you know I I think as we close because we're at the 11 minute mark. Already. Dude, it's crazy. Um, you know, I'm sitting there thinking I I know one thing that I often struggle with when I read the Bible is I know the story so well. Yeah. I don't get, I guess, enamored or amazed yes. by what the details that are happening, yes. you know. And so I, I think one thing I'd love to encourage our students with today is is to sit there and read this. And I know you can't pretend as if you don't know the story, yep. but do your best to try to remember that, man, these disciples, they hadn't, they didn't. I mean, Jesus told them, yes. you know, he's like, man, I'm going to die. And, but it seems like they just kind of forgot all that. Yeah. We're going to get in that later. It seems, uh, it seems so, like it. I yeah. don't know. And, but they didn't know how this thing was going to play out. Nope. And, and what that must have done yeah. just to their spirits and their heart. I mean, I just, I, I can't imagine what that must have felt like. Right. You, know? you think you think you struggle with doubt? Yeah. Those disciples at that time were struggling with doubt, like their life yeah. had just been flipped. Mm-hmm. And I um, can't imagine what that was like. Yeah. So to, to sit in that is, I think, a good way to study Scripture during this time, is to mm-hmm. say, let's, let's think about what's happening here. And then after we think about it, we get the details. Let's allow ourselves to have informed emotions and feelings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What would be a legitimate feeling and emotion mm-hmm. there? And then think about how, you know what? You kind of see some similarities in your life with the disciples during those times yeah. in their life. But really, yeah, I, think, I think that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. And so I guess uh, I mean, it's good news because we know, we know Sunday's yep. coming, right? As Sunday, the, yeah. as <laughs> we the preachers That's right, say. Yeah. Uh, but what's crazy is as you get on to watch tomorrow's episode or, or listen to tomorrow's episode, uh, like the day doesn't get any better. For it doesn't them. get any better. Right. It, it takes and even a, Saturday. It doesn't, get any it doesn't better. matter. And so, so well, I just, I, I'm I laughing, just, but it's not funny. But it's, it's like it's gonna get crazy. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, man, so, I pray that you just reflect on that. And um, yeah. man, uh, Thursday must have been crazy. I know it must yeah, have been. Must have been crazy. Man, so study on, man. Study on. Listen in tomorrow. And uh, man, thanks for checking in.